My guest today is Chad Lauer. Chad is the president of Lauer Media Company, and he hosts a podcast called the Lauer Power Podcast. And Lauer is spelled L-A-U-E-R. When I asked him for his bio, he simply said, I'm addicted to B2B sales. But I'm going completely off script now to tell you that there is so much to Chad's backstory that I'm going to require you (laughs) to listen to his podcast. It's brand new. But his very first episode, he talks about the unbelievable health challenges that he has had to endure his whole life. And really to get to know him and his backstory is it just says so much about him as a person. And I want to find out for him from him today how this led to his sales, um, his sales career, which is what we're going to basically focus on today. So in our episode, Chad is going to talk about the concept of sales as a service, which is super intriguing. He also will address why sales has such a negative connotation and why it's seen as sales gets no respect, really. And so why is this so? And I'm going to ask him for tips on how introverts like myself can get better at sales since if you run a business, whether it's freelancing or a business with other people, you need to sell. Every business is about selling. So we're going to just dive right in. Okay, Chad, welcome to my podcast. I'm thrilled to have you here. It's just, I'm so excited to talk about you, to talk to you. I don't even know where to start, but thank you so much for taking, for taking the time. Of course, Lyndon. Thanks for having me. And, you know, thanks to Coda August for connecting us. And I think he realized that there was some synergy between the two of us. And I'm super happy, um, you know, to join you. Yeah. And I, I mentioned in your intro that you have been through a lot of health issues and are still going through them, I imagine. So my first question is, how are you doing now? Because I'm told everyone that to listen to, I'm not even going to get into all of it because I would steer them to that episode. Yeah. So, so for, for, you know, and I appreciate you asking that question. And for a majority of my life, I never really wanted to tell my story. You know, it's, um, it's something that I've kind of lived, um, you know, and kept really close to the chest. Um, and there's a reason for that, right? You know, there's some people in today's world who want to put everything out there, Mm -hmm. um, every day and, you know, have people feel bad for them. I never wanted anybody to feel bad for me. You know, I, I, I wanted to, um, you know, live a normal life. And that's what I talk about on my podcast. You know, when I've been in some really tough places in my life, the things that really mattered to me, uh, were doing the little things, you know, having dinner with my family, spending time with my kids, coaching basketball, um, those little everyday things when you're in some of the positions I've been in my life, you realize are, the big things, right. you know, I think we all have this preconceived notion of, you know, success or money or travel. And, you know, as I got older and I experienced, you know, not knowing whether you're going to live or not, I realized that like eating a meal and talking to your family or having wings with your friends or, you know, just going to work. Right. You know, I think a lot of people think, oh, I don't want to work. You know, I love to work. You know, and and when I was in those moments, I just wanted to go to work. I don't want to sit at home all day, you know. Right. So, yeah, I think, you know, my podcast, you know, this isn't a plug for it, but you asked me is about using adversity as motivation to do good in the world. And that's to build each other up and to um, reach out to each other and and provide that sense of community, which, by the way, Linda, is what the podcast world does. So right. kudos to you for, you know, most people stop. You're on, you're approaching your hundredth episode. So this is I mean, 101. You you up. You're one. So this is 101, right? <laughs> so, so, so you've continued on that path because you have listeners to help educate them and build them up. So I'm super happy to be here with you and um, truly appreciate it. So I'm feeling great. Uh, I have battles, you know, every day, you know, I, I, I deal with, but um, they don't stop me. So thanks for asking. Yeah. And the thing is too, somebody has said this to me a while ago, and it's so true that when you go through stuff, whether it's, you know, health issues or emotional issues or relationship stuff, like in my case, I just made some bad decisions in my life that put me in situations where were pretty awful. Um, they help you, they change your perspective 
as you had mentioned. Um, and it helps you to really see what's valuable and what's important. And someone has said to me recently that people who've gone through things see the world differently than people who have not experienced anything. And it just seems very true. I've talked to people who have not gone through anything and I just don't relate to them because they, they don't know what it's like to overcome things. You agree with that? I do. And eventually they will, right? Nobody gets out of here alive, as they say. So um, I look at the fact that, you know, all I can, you know, go off of is my perspective. And I look at it as, you know, I wouldn't change it because I don't think I'd be a business owner today. I don't think I'd be as good of a dad today. I don't think I'd be as motivated today. I don't think I'd reach out to that person who I can see struggling if I hadn't gone through that myself. So I look at this as I'm here for a reason and it's to make a difference. And I'm going to do everything in my power to do that. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect. That doesn't always mean I'm going to be nice to you. I talk about that too, right? That just means that if I see you doing something that I don't think you should be doing, I'm going to challenge you on it. And if you see me doing something that you don't think I should be doing, you should challenge me on that because caring isn't always about being nice to somebody, right. you know? So uh, I think we think of like, Hey, I'm going to make a difference as I'm going to be this jolly, happy, you know, person all the time. Well, no, that's being fake. Right. I think making a difference is being real. And in today's society in particular, in the social media era, and I, listen, I own a media company, so I'm not knocking it. <laughs> um, I think it's really important that we realize life isn't what we see on social media pages, right? Life is being real. And I'm vulnerable in my podcast. Uh, there are certain things I still can't talk about. So you're never going to hear me talk about them on my podcast. But I think I let you in enough to know that um, no matter what you see on social media or what you see on the front of a business, you know, when you walk into a, a business or whatever, it's not the real story. There, there's right. a story behind that. And I think we need to approach our lives like that. You know, just because somebody looks like they're well off or they're poor has no, there's no correlation. Right to what they're dealing with, you know, really wealthy people deal with some really tough stuff, you know, really poor people deal with some really tough stuff. We're all just people. And I'll, I don't want to rant about this, but I'll tell you when, a, when it really hits home, it hits home to me every three months. So every three months I have to go get essentially my whole body scanned. And when you go into an MRI machine at a cancer center in particular, they put you in a waiting room. And in that waiting room, you all just have gowns on. Mm -hmm. All you have is a gown and you're naked, but underneath that gown, you are naked. And there's like, you know, there's a group for the, for the men. And then across the hall, there's a women and we all go and we get our blood work and our IVs set up, et cetera. That's a great reminder to me that like, we're all just human, right? Cause there's no, you don't know where somebody's from. You don't know what they do for a living. You don't know anything about them, but we look at each other. And we root for each other yeah. thinking, hey, man, I hope you're okay. I hope your scan's okay. Yeah. You know, and, and that's a really sobering thing that I get to experience. And there's people in that waiting room that I've been with that haven't made it, right? That I know of that they didn't get to see me again. Wow. And, you know, so that's a good reminder for me. Um, and I, those are stressful times. But, you know, I come out of there every three months thinking, man, like, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to be here, you know? Yeah. When I used to do in-home personal That's training, funny. a lot of my clients were very wealthy. I would go into people's homes and I would be just not of my own accord. I'd get involved in stuff because they're having maybe a family fight or something or somebody's, I mean, there was things that I, I did it for 15 years and I just was there when somebody had a phone call that somebody in their family had passed away and, and all those things reminded me, I'd be sitting in sometimes these huge mansions, you know, people had a lot of wealth. And I realized we're all just people, you know? And so it's not to go completely off the track, but I mean, all of what we do, there's, we all have a backstory and we just don't know what the other people's, you know, what their backstory is. And so it's, it makes it easier to just kind of get through life when someone says something you don't like, or you can just kind of brush it off easier because you don't know, maybe they had a bad day. Maybe they got bad news that morning, you know, and that's how I look. Yeah. And <laughs> Yeah. And it's funny, like we're going to talk about sales today and some of the negative connotations with sales and what we do for a living isn't who we are. Right. And I think people forget that sometimes, <laughs> you know, so um, we're going to get into that in this episode because um, 
you know, I think it's it's important for people to realize that, you know, um, what we do is not who we are at all. So I think yeah. we have these preconceived notions of there are good doctors like that are good people and there's really bad people that are doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, there are good lawyers who are good people and there's really bad people that are good that are lawyers. Like every industry has good and bad people. Right. And we need to do our best to remind ourselves that like, listen, you know, we're going to build each other up. We're going to look for the positives, but at the same time, we need to, we need to be aware of that. Like, you know, what we do for a living isn't who we are as a person. So just a good reminder of that. And that's a great segue. So thank you for that. So the <laughs> sales, what, yeah. Yeah. how did you land in sales? Was it a deliberate um, career choice? And did you end up kind of falling into it. Like a lot of times with marketing, I hear that a lot. Yeah. So that's a great question. I think I just have to go back for a second. Like I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. I hear people say that a lot, but you know, I never thought of the world um, like most people who work eight to five. Like I never wanted to do that. Um, I wanted to, I was entrepreneurial at a really young age, put it that way. So I um, did an internship in college with uh, Epic, it's called, it's the Electronic Health Records. And I had a job that was lined up at Baylor College of Medicine. And um, it was with a consulting firm. And the day before I was supposed to fly fly out, you know, essentially they um, they said they lost the contract. So I, I, I just had graduated from school at the time. And I was like, what do I want to do next? And a recruiter called me and said, hey, uh, we have this company in Philadelphia who loves to recruit former athletes. So I was a division one track athlete who then transferred to play college basketball. So literally that's the only reason why they called me. They said, Hey, we're looking for people who are college athletes because you know, they're competitive. Mm -hmm. I went to the interview and they hired me and I never looked back. So I spent a decade, um, with AT&T and business to business sales and then in two, 2018, I uh, went out on my own and, and started Lauer Media Company. And uh, if you can sell, you can be an entrepreneur. And yep. that's just the fact. It doesn't matter what your, what your uh, product or service is. If you can sell, it allows you to be in business for yourself. Did you have a natural ability, do you feel, to sell? Like, how did you I do. get at it? I do. Yeah. So I'll tell you, I... Um, I'm not the best salesperson, but I do feel like um, people trust me, and that's a key to sales. Uh, when I would talk to folks, I feel like I would be able to connect with them pretty quickly. Um, and you know, I think that um, that comes with work as well. So what I mean by that is, you know, if if I make a hundred phone calls to 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 businesses. You know, I would be able to get like 10 appointments and somebody else might need to make 500 phone calls to get 10 appointments. And a lot of that is, you know, your structure, how you speak to people on the phone. Are you asking the right questions? For me, I truly care about their business. And I think a lot of people, you know, feel that when I talk to them. Um, so, yeah, it was just a natural fit for me. It really was. And I fell in love with it. Uh, the other thing is I kind of in my podcast, I mentioned, um, you know, I grew up with uh, divorced parents and my father passed away when I was 17. So when they told me I had no cap on my income, that was a game changer for me. <laughs> so it was like, listen, um, you know, if you work really hard, we're not going to cap you. So I think when that happened, the light bulb went on and I was like, all right, let's go. Um, and I was able to know that the harder I worked, the, uh, you know, I would be compensated fairly. That's interesting because um, I've always been an entrepreneurial as well, but I've not I never purposely went out like like selling. Like when I was doing personal training, I was doing that on my own and I would do things that I just felt would work. You know, I connected with a, a local fitness equipment selling, like place that sells fitness equipment for home gym. And I just said to him, hey, you know, if uh, you sell a piece of equipment, send me out as you know free personal training. <clears throat> I talked about this in another episode <clears throat> and it just, it ended up building my, business, but I didn't know what I was doing. You know, so, but when you talk about sales as a service, can you talk about what that is actually and how does it work? Yeah. So this gets me excited. Um, so sales as a service is something new that Lauer Media um, has recently created. 
And what I've found is, you know, I've been in the professional world for 16 years now, most of that in sales. Um, and I'm not saying this to brag, but I was a top sales rep at my previous company out of 5,000 for like five of 10 years. You should brag about um, something like that. <laughs> yeah. That was before I went out on my own, right? And uh, what I found was, you know, we sell SEO, we sell Google ads, we sell social media website or social media marketing, we sell websites, et cetera. All of those things are us generating an inbound lead. And it works really, really well. But we're waiting for that lead to come to us, mm -hmm. right? And in an ideal world, you know, that's what the product and services that we sell. But the way we sell that is by, for our own business, doing those things. And in addition, outreach in the sales process, because that's who I am. I'm a sales guy. So what I found was none of my clients really had a confident outbound sales system. Mm -hmm. So they would rely on all of that inbound. And I said, listen, guys, why don't we move the needle for our clients the same way we do? So what I would do is I would ask our clients, the business owners, you know, how is your sales team doing? And every one of them would be like, oh man, the, it's rough, right? And the, here's the reason why. If you own a business and you hire sales reps, plural, you're really, really good ones. You're not going to be able to hang on to them too long, right? They're going to be the ones that are so motivated that they're either going to be making way too much money for you to afford them, or they, they can go other places to make you know, a lot of money. Your mediocre ones are going to hang out and your bad ones you're going to get rid of. So you're in a constant cycle, you know, then your other option is you sell yourself, right? And if you're the entrepreneur that's selling yourself, you eventually will grow your business through the sales process and then you'll hit a bottleneck. And what happens is you start servicing all of the clients that you sold and then you don't have time to sell new. Mm -hmm. So your business will always plateau. So we said, we can service this entire market. One is that entrepreneur who's a single member entrepreneur, while they're servicing, we will do all of the blue collar dirty work for them. And what does that mean? That means, hey, we will do the outreach on your behalf. We will call on your behalf. We will do email and, and, and LinkedIn outreach on your behalf. Um, and when we get that meeting, we can even sell for you if you train us how to sell, okay? If not, you can come in once we get the meeting and you can close it. So Linda, I'll give you an example. Say you're, pod, you're doing podcasts all day, right? Your hardest thing is to try to get your next podcast guest, right? Mm -hmm. It's really hard. But if you're always in, in, in podcasts like this, we would be doing the outreach right now as you and I are talking. So when you get off of this podcast, we have a meeting scheduled for you to interview a potential guest, right? We took that busy work out of your day. And I'll tell you what, it's working really, really well. Um, and uh, we're really excited about it because because people are interested. And it works for you know even the company that has 10 or 20 or 30 reps. I say to them, hey, I want to outsell your reps at a fraction of the cost. So people are scared to sell. Yeah. And sales rep, you know, you picture the old school sales guy with the full suit and tie in the briefcase, right? They don't exist anymore. No. They just don't, right? People are a little bit afraid to sell and it's okay. We we call people business development managers. They're sales reps, right? All of my friends who own businesses, like one of my best friends is a financial advisor. He's selling retirement, right? Mm -hmm. He's selling re investments. Right. I have another friend that works for Stryker. I don't know what his title is, but he's selling medical device. Right. Yeah. I have, you know, all these folks who are in business and we never want to give them the title of sales rep because it's a negative connotation, but we are all selling. And if we don't sell, none of those other jobs exist because right. we're not bringing the client back to the home base. And sales as a service fixes that. We'll serve. We'll serve you and we'll we'll go through the 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 dirty, the blue collar dirty work of the sales process uh, that nobody wants to do and we do it for you. Right. So that's sales as a service and and we're super excited about where it's going. I love that because it's taking the part 
that that people hate the most. Like for me, it's like just especially as an introvert, you know, just to get um, out in front of people and sell myself. I'm just so uncomfortable with it, even if I have I have all the confidence in what I do. Still, I mean, what do you say to someone? Introvert? Like, say they wanted to do this on their own, they didn't want to. You know, just do you have any tips for people who? Yeah, I, I have a lot of tips. Uh, I think that it's like training a muscle. You know, I think it's it's something that the more you do it, the better you get. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think um, that growth happens outside of your comfort zone. I'll give you an example. As successful as I was at sales, I hated to cold call in person. I was not comfortable doing it in person. My best friend, Kevin Gatilius, loved to cold call in person. He hated the phone. I was really good on the phone, right? Mm -hmm. So my point is you have to figure out which one of those sales processes you feel the most comfortable with and just stick with it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I have a system that I put in place and I I might be jumping around here, but... um, Anytime that I do outreach, okay, I have four rules. And the the thing people struggle with is the intro. They don't even know where to start, right? So I go, intro is number one, meaning, hi, Linda, right? That's my intro. (laughs) Ask a question. How are you, right? So number two is ask a question. Number three is the reason for my call is, right? And then number four is, mention something about their business. It's not about you. So it would go something like this. It would go, hi, Linda, how are you? Great. (laughs) Is this a cold call? (laughs) It is. Listen, my name is Chad Lauer. I'm with Lauer Media Company. And the reason for my call is that I noticed that you weren't getting much traction on YouTube for your your podcast. Uh, Is somebody working on that for you? No, not at the moment. No? Okay. <laughs> Have you noticed that yourself? <laughs> yes. Now you put me on the spot. You that yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, so listen, that's something that we do. Um, and I think it's really important to for all podcasters. Um, so would you be willing to meet with me next week, you know, for 15 minutes? I can show you how we can drive traffic to increase, you know, your your YouTube visibility for for your podcast. Now, see, I would say yes to you because I know you a little bit. But if it was a totally cold call and I didn't know the person, because I get these a lot in, re- in real life, I'd be very hesitant unless somebody had referred that person. Yep, I get it. But my point is when you do that, right, You di- I didn't call you and say, hey, my name's Chad Lauer. I am the best at increasing your views on YouTube or I am great at marketing podcasts on YouTube, right? I didn't say that. Mm-hmm. Right. I said, one, how are you? I mentioned who I was. I told you the reason for my call mm-hmm. and I told you what's in it for you. What's yeah. in it for you is I, I, I have a way to help your business. Right. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about me. Right. Okay. Now you might have said no to me. I don't care because if I do that a hundred times, there's going to be somebody who's been thinking about that service right. and they haven't done it. Right. And, and, and that's okay. And I don't care whether you tell me yes or no. I truly could care less about the outcome at all. And I think that's what separates a really good salesperson and a really good entrepreneur from somebody who said, uh oh, Linda might have told me no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be offended by that or I'm not going to like it. Right. I could care less because mm-hmm. I have a goal in mind and I'm more addicted to the process than I am the outcome. Right. So my advice to, introverts is, listen, that might be really hard for you to do what I just did, but what's the most comfortable way for you to pitch your services? Is it referrals? If it's referrals, you need to know who your referral source is and you need to talk to them, take them to lunch, take them to coffee, whatever Mm -hmm. you need to do, because that's the best thing for you. If it's LinkedIn, because you feel more comfortable on your computer, you better use sales navigator and you better use, you know, direct messaging and you better write content that's so stinking good that people engage with your content and then they're coming to you it for an inbound lead. Right. right. So 
Ideally, in an ideal world, and what sales as a service does is we do all of the above, right? We're going to cold call on the phone. We're going to do outreach on LinkedIn. We're going to do outreach on, on direct mail. We're going to send you physical mail, right? Mm-hmm. That's what sales as a service does because we have a process that we track that says, hey, we know the real money's in the follow-up. Right. So we're going to, after we email you, we're going to follow that up with a phone call. If you don't respond there, we're going to follow it up with a LinkedIn message. If you don't respond there, we're going to send you something in the mail. If you don't respond, I'm going to keep coming until you tell me no. Mm-hmm. Once you tell me no, thanks, fine, bye, on to the next one. So it's a full-time job. Yeah. Right? It's not, it's not something you do. Because even if you're good at it and you are an introvert and you do sell for one month, you then empty that pipeline, you, you generate the revenue, and you're back to zero, right? It needs to happen every day to keep that pipeline full. How much of it, because this is something I was told by one of my copywriting coaches, we were talking about cold calling and cold outreach. And he said about 85% of it is mine. Because I have landed clients just from um, cold email. And both times it was like, you know what, your timing is perfect. Because I was looking for this right now. I mean, is that does that play a big role in it? You think it does, yeah. But there's no way to know if the time's right unless you make the call, right? And that's the thing I think people don't realize is, you know, uh, you the the harder you work, the luckier you get, right? Right, and 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 again, you know, you there there are there are common misconceptions to sales folks, which you know. We hear all the time, like, hey, oh, it's just a salesperson or, hey, it, you know, they just care about money or, hey, whatever. But every one of us is in sales, right? right? Every single one of us is in sales. And, and I'm here to remind us of that. I, I, I share on my podcast, 50% of the GDP in the United States is made up of small to medium-sized businesses, meaning entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Entrepreneurs make up as much of our economy as those big companies on Wall Street, right? They exist because they can sell their product or service. Mm -hmm. That's just a fact, right? right? And we tend to support each other, right? So if I know, hey, you went out on your own and you risked it all, I'm going to support you. Mm -hmm. And in turn, you're going to support me back. You know, so uh, I think that's a, a, a big part of it. You know, there's this negative connotation to sales that I just can't comprehend. And it's not fair, right? It's like it's like anybody who's really good at their profession. They have yeah. confidence in yeah. it. But I'm the guy that's here to say, man, I'm proud of sales. I'll sell for you if you want me to sell for you. Uh, my company's built to do that. But let's change our outlook on sales. It's helping our neighbors. It's helping our, our fellow entrepreneurs. And it's helping create jobs in our in our economy, you know, like mm-hmm. It's not. It's not a negative thing. Everybody has that used car salesman mentality. That's right. not what sales is. You know. Well, what is it that you love about it? Was it what you just talked about about how you're helping the economy and all that? What What do you love about sales? I can't comprehend waking up in the morning without an unlimited world in my existence. There is no limit. Every day in sales to what you can accomplish, you know, it's, it's crazy. There's no limit. You know, you can do, you can come up with a strategy that could change your world and the next five generations of your life. And, you know, it can happen quick. Mm -hmm. You know, you can teach that other person to accomplish their goals who, you know, like here's what I'll tell you. Like if you're in sales and you need to go make a couple extra bucks, you can do it. You know, you can go do it like right now. Um, So it's just one of those professions that I think is, uh, you know, it's super exciting. And and I think that's what drew me to entrepreneurship. Business is the same way. You know, if you start your own copywriting business, there's an unlimited amount of businesses that you could you could gain as clients this year. Mm -hmm. It's just a fact. You could look around your neighborhood and employ 20 people in the next few years. Yeah. You know, if you learn how to sell that product. So it's, um, I think that's probably the thing I love the most about it. So it's really about being entrepreneurial, it sounds like, because I've always been entrepreneurial myself. I've always had, even if I worked for someone else, like right out of school, 
I always did. I had a side hustle all the time. It's the only thing that kept me going. If I didn't have that, I, I needed some kind of something that was my own, you know? So it's, I totally get that. What, what would you, what kind of advice would you give to like independent professionals like myself um, who are just starting to create like a strong sales process? Is there some specific advice you would give them? I think you need to know your niche market, right? You need to really know who you're looking to talk to so that when you call them, it makes so much sense to them that they almost can't say no, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I think that's number one. Uh, number two is you have to be prepared to do that dirty work, you know? Uh, it's a blue collar job in a white collar industry. I tell everybody that, right? And I don't care what business you're in. You have to be prepared to do that on your own. And if you can do that on your own, you're going to be way less stressed because you know you can go get that next client, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and then number three is I would make sure that you have a process in place for outreach. You know, I think you need to make sure that that outreach happens consistently. And if you don't have the time to do it, you need to hire somebody else to do it. You know, there was a time where I don't even know if I was supposed to do this, but like, you know, if I would run four sales meetings in a day, I used to go nine, 11, one, and three. Those were my slots because I used to like to call from eight to 9 a.m. and four to five, I would call golden hour. So those two hours beginning and ending the day, I, I loved to, to call myself. But while I was in those meetings, I used to pay a call center to call for me. So when I ended my day at five, I wanted to get four contracts. I wanted to get a nine contract, an 11 contract, a one contract, and a three contract. I wanted to land those four. And my goal was to have four more appointments booked from that call center or from my calls from you know eight to nine or four to five for the next week. you know. And then when you get in that system, everything just falls into place because mm -hmm. you know what you're doing every day, you know what your expectations are every day. And you should come in Monday with a full, fully booked week of people that you're meeting with that you can provide your services or your product or solution to. Um, and I think what happens is the biggest thing we see is the pipeline fill up. You know, you'll get meetings one week and then the next meetings you're, 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 you got nothing. And then yeah. you're like, whoo, I'm, I'm in, a, I'm on that rat race, you know, feast or and, famine. um, feast or famine. And then what happens is your revenue goes up and down with peaks and valleys where if you're if you have a sales system that revenue looks like a good stock it's going to go up and down but it's going to consist it's going to consistently and slowly move up yeah and then that's when you give yourself the opportunity to hire other people and then you you know they're now working for you so some people don't want to do that either so I'm not saying that's for everybody but right. if you just want to have one person and you want to be a single owner entrepreneur I think that's fabulous. Uh, but you still can make your, your life easier if you had a consistent sales process. That makes so much sense. Yeah. Well, this has been such a great conversation and very motivational. <laughs> Where can people find you? Obviously LinkedIn, right? Yeah. LinkedIn, uh, lowermediaco.com is our, our website for Lower Media Company, uh, especially if you're you know interested in sales as a service. And then uh, the Lower Power podcast, Mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, something that's really, really a passion of mine right now. So as you had mentioned in the beginning, um, some of my struggles, the whole thing is based on using adversity as motivation. And we're sharing other folks' stories who have gone through some really, really tough stuff. Uh, they're telling us what they learned fr from it. And the whole point is to reach out, build each other up, and, um, you know, use that adversity to do good in the world. That's great. Well, I'm going to put all the links to your podcast and your website and everything in the show notes. So thank you so much, Chad, for being here today. This has really been great. Linda, thanks for having me. And I'm sure we'll talk uh, in the future and can't wait to, to learn more about your process.